What is a true fact so baffling it should be false? Story 1. From 1613 and 1620, a samurai traveled to Rome by way of Mexico. During this time Shakespeare was still alive, Virginia had been founded for around a decade, Galileo was accused of heresy, and Pocahontas arrived in England. He met the Pope, and he was made a Roman citizen. His name was Hasekura Tsuninaga, and was the last Japanese person to officially visit Europe until around 1860. Story 2. One day Mao Zedong saw a sparrow eating grain. Thinking that the sparrows were hurting China's grain supply, he and the Communist Party launched the Four Pests campaign. The Chinese military and population killed every sparrow they could find. Embassies didn't allow the Chinese to kill sparrows on their property, so the Chinese banged pots and pans outside the embassies 24-7 until the sparrows died of exhaustion. Unfortunately for the Chinese, sparrows mainly eat insects, not grain. The locust population exploded and 43 million people starved to death. Story 3. The Life of Frein Selak, the Luckiest Unlucky Man in the World January 1962 France was riding on a train through a freezing canyon when it fell into an icy river. All 17 other passengers died while he escaped with a broken arm and hypothermia. 1963. On his first plane trip, he was sucked out of the plane's door and landed in a haystack, unscathed. 19 other people were killed in the crash. 1966. He was riding in a bus when it skidded off the road into yet another icy river. Four passengers drowned while he only received some minor cuts and bruises. 1970, his car's engine burst into flames while he was driving, but he managed to escape before it exploded. 1973, in yet another driving incident, his car's engine was doused with hot oil from a broken fuel pump. This caused flames to shoot through the air vents, singing off all of his hair. He was otherwise unharmed. 1995, he was hit by a bus but only sustained minor injuries. 1996, to escape a head-on collision with a United Nations truck on a mountain curve, he swerved into a guardrail that broke on impact. To save himself, he jumped out of his car's open door and grabbed onto a tree branch as he watched his car plummet off the cliff. Story 4. If you're launching from Earth, the most difficult place to reach in the solar system is the sun. The reason for this is that to fly directly into the sun, you need to first launch from Earth and then remove all of your orbital velocity around the sun. Anything less will just put you into a different orbit around the sun rather than directly into it. The amount of power required for that to do it directly is basically impossible currently. As an alternative, you could, for relatively little power, fly all the way out to Pluto distance, slow down much less, and then fall back into the sun. The trade-off, being the travel time, is now about 90 years. There are others in between paths that could get you there for different balances of energy and time, but all of them are tougher than getting basically anywhere else in the solar system with an equivalent balance. There's a mission currently traveling to study the sun, the Parker Solar Probe. It won't be flying directly in, but plans to make the closest passes than any probe ever has. It's going to make seven passes by Venus to shed speed so it can get closer and closer to the sun. The full flight time is planned as just less than seven years. As of this post, they are one week shy of a year in. Story 5 Switzerland has accidentally invaded Liechtenstein thrice in the last 50 years. For the first time in 1976, the Swiss military got lost and ended up in Liechtenstein, so the Liechtensteiners offered them drinks like proper hosts. The second time in 1992, the Swiss military forgot that a certain observation post was actually not in Swiss territory but in Liechtenstein territory, so they just said sorry and forgot about it. Then again in 2007, the Swiss army got lost and entered Liechtenstein but eventually realized they weren't in Switzerland anymore, Toto, so they turned back. Liechtenstein didn't even know this happened till the Swiss apologized, again, to which they basically said, no problem bro, takeaways, the Swiss army is bad with directions, the Liechtenstein army people are chill bros, story 6, a morbidly obese person can survive with absolute starvation without any sickness or feeling ill, under close control, there have been studies since the 60s, there was a patient in 1973 who went under a 382-day starvation diet for therapeutic purposes under close control with only vitamin and mineral supplements and water intake without protein, carbohydrate, or fat intake, no food at all, dropped from 207 kilograms to 88 kilograms and maintained it. After a follow-up checkup five years later, the patient was 96 kilograms stabilized. Prolonged fasting had no ill effects. If anybody is curious about the article, 
The PubMed ID is PMC2495396, Story 7. I spend a lot of time on the history videos that put things into scale a bit more. Also kinda morbid, but Ringo Starr almost didn't get a gig with the Beatles because they thought he was too old for their band. Take in mind who's still alive and making music. I am aware their deaths weren't natural causes, but I find that funny. Story 8. Hunting animals can sometimes lead to larger populations of that same animal. The idea of a carrying capacity exists because there's a limit to the speed at which resources cycle or become available. When a population is above carrying capacity, the population will decrease as individuals starve. What is important is that these individuals don't just die, they will try to survive and in doing so will reduce the number of available resources to others while still failing to reproduce. By culling animal populations back to the carrying capacity, ethical hunters can actually help the population by reducing the number of eating animals to a sustainable one and ensuring a better distribution of resources, preventing a population crash. Story 9. Stonehenge, the world's most famous henge, isn't actually a henge. A henge is a Neolithic earthworks, circular or oval in shape, sometimes containing stone or wooden structures and with a perimeter of a bank and then ditch. So what people think of as the henge part of Stonehenge, the stones, aren't what would be the henge anyway, they are an optional extra, it is the ditch and bank perimeter that officially make a henge, and at Stonehenge they are the wrong way round to be a proper henge. Now the bit that makes this fact so baffling it should be false is that the origin of the word henge can be traced no further back than the naming of Stonehenge, so despite not even being a proper henge, Stonehenge is the henge all actual henges are named after. Story 10. One of the implications of the theory of relativity is that light does not experience the passage of time because it travels at light speed and experiences time dilation. So for the photons that reach Earth from billions of light years away, such as the microwave background radiation left over from the birth of the universe, the billions of years of transit time are an instant. Entire civilizations rose and fell, with their languages coming into existence and going extinct in that moment experienced by a photon in transit. Entire star systems are born, mature, get consumed by the aging star, and die in a nova, and that time is as nothing to those photons. Story 11, literally any fact about neutron stars, such incredible and wonderfully wacky objects. Edit. I've done a little bit of research and I wanted to share with you some of my favorite neutron star facts as I realized I've not actually answered the question at all, really sorry. Due to the conservation of angular momentum, when a star collapses into a neutron star, the neutron star itself often begins to rotate very quickly. The fastest rotating neutron star we know of spins over 700 times a second or at 0.24 c. Some neutron stars have extremely strong magnetic fields, sometimes of up to 10 under 11 Tesla, a few quadrillion times the strength of Earth's magnetic field. This makes them non-ideal holiday destinations, as the field could wipe your credit card strip at a distance of over 192,000 kilometers. We know neutron stars are dense, exceptionally dense, sometimes up to 1017 kilogram embathory. To put that in perspective, a 1 or 3 piece of neutron star would weigh the same as a solid cube of iron, 700 mounders across, about the same height as the Burj Khalifa. The gravitational field of a neutron star is also frankly ridiculous, around 200 billion times stronger than Earth's. If you dropped an object from 1 millers above the surface, it would accelerate to over 7,000 kilometers hour before it hit the star. This intense gravitational field also means that the maximum surface irregularities are about 5 mm, so not great for mountaineering. Neutron star cores are still pretty much a mystery to us. We think we have an idea of what goes on, but it's very weird stuff. Under these sorts of conditions, matter is about as dense as it can ever be before collapsing into a black hole. We believe that matter exists as a sort of ultra-dense soup of superfluid neutrons, or at higher densities, neutrons themselves dissociate into their constituent quarks, and we have an ultra-dense quark-gluon plasma. This stuff is exceptionally weird. Story 12. Not proven, because if we could ever prove it, we'd all likely be dead. But there is probably stuff called strange matter inside neutron stars. 
Essentially, it is the ideal state of matter. If two neutron stars collide, this strange matter could go hurling across the universe in the form of tiny, undetectable particles. If one of these particles hit Earth, it would almost instantly assimilate all matter on the planet into more strange matter, and in like 15 minutes everything we've ever known would be a ball of strange matter roughly 10 miles across. Story 13. There is a medical cause of death known as broken heart syndrome. People who have just suffered from great loss just die for no reason, and upon further autopsy there is a very distinct mark on the heart. The people literally died from a broken heart, which is insane. Most of these cases are from parents who lost a child, or if someone lost their loved one and parents very close together, or other drastic cases. Story 14, Number 15, Burger King Foot Lettuce The last thing you'd want in your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus, but as it turns out, that might be what you get. A 4chaner uploaded a photo anonymously to the site showcasing his feet in a plastic bin of lettuce, with the statement, This is the lettuce you eat at Burger King. Admittedly, he had shoes on, but that's even worse. The post went live at 11.38 p.m. on July 16th, and a mere 20 minutes later, the Burger King in question was alerted to the rogue employee. At least I hope he's rogue. How did it happen? Well, the BK employee hadn't removed the EXIF data from the uploaded photo, which suggested the culprit was somewhere in Mayfield Heights, Ohio. This was at 11.47. Three minutes later, at 11.50, the Burger King branch address was posted with wishes of happy unemployment. Five minutes later, the news station was contacted by another 4chaner. And three minutes later, at 11.58, a link was posted. BK's Tell Us About Us online forum. The foot photo, otherwise known as Exhibit A, was attached. Cleveland Scene Magazine contacted the BK in question the next day. When questioned, the breakfast shift manager said, Oh, I know who that is. He's getting fired. Mystery solved by 4chan, now we can all go back to eating our fast food in peace. Story 15. The furthest into space we've seen is a photo by the Hubble telescope, which captured galaxies billions of light years away. This means that the light captured in this photo was traveling straight and uninterrupted for billions of years, just to shoot into a telescope and end its journey as a photograph. This also means we're seeing the state of those galaxies as they existed billions of years ago. They may not even exist anymore. The whole damn thing could blow up and we wouldn't know for billions of years. It also means this light energy was generated near the beginning of our universe's existence. Story 16. The Brazilian Navy was tasked with helping to patrol the Gibraltar Strait in 1918, near the end of World War I. They were warned of submarine activity in the area. They saw shadows on the water and got desperate thinking it was German submarines and shot at them with everything they had, pistols, shotguns, rifles, you name it. Then the blood came out of the water. They were shooting at dolphins, not submarines. Story 17. The Monarchy brothers, Yanaki and Milton, were photography and cinema pioneers of the Balkan Peninsula and the Ottoman Empire. In 1905, the brothers bought a bioscope camera in London, brought it back home to what is now Greece, and filmed their 114-year-old grandmother Despina Weaving, making her the earliest born person ever captured on motion picture film, born in 1791. Story 18, original Damascus steel produced from the 3rd to the 17th century, aka Woot steel, was well made, flexible, strong, and able to hold an edge, and no one knows the exact method as to how it was made. All steel produced after atomic testing in the 1950s and 60s has a certain amount of radiation in it due to atmospheric radiation contamination. For machines requiring low background radiation steel, lower than modern steel, people cut it from sunken World War I-era battleships, even lead ballast from the 450-year-old ship. The San Ignacio was used due to its non-existent radiation signature. Story 19. Humans are extremely rapidly making their only home toxic to human life. Every year, the estimations are shorter and shorter. It's actually extremely likely that we are less than 10 generations away from having no suitable home. No one wants it to be true because it's just too mind-boggling to accept. People would prefer to ignore it as it's not in their lifetimes. Well, it actually is. There's an extremely great chance that all regions within 150 miles of the equator will no longer be habitable to human life in as little as 50 years. 
a tremendous amount of our land mass will be engulfed by the sea in as little as 50 years. That's not the bad part. Our population is not slowing down. The current model looks like this. Continue increasing population. Continue clearing forests for farmland. Continue processing metals and plastics for more homes and automobiles. Reduce the habitable land mass. Reduce the clean water available. Reduce biodiversity. It does not make sense. This is not sustainable. Story 20. There is a framework called the Cosmic Calendar designed to illustrate to people how old the universe is relative to events that occurred since its beginning. Just after midnight on the morning of January 1st represents the start of the universe, and December 31st at 11.59 p.m. represents the current time. On that scale, Earth appears in the calendar during the first week of September, and anatomically modern man doesn't appear until December 31st at 11.54 p.m. Story 21 Rats and mice are extremely social animals that are very in tune with the people around them. Because of this, when doing experiments that revolve around behavior, researchers have to be very careful when doing anything with the animals. They have to be held a certain way, coddled a certain way, and talked to a certain way to keep all the variables aligned. I.e. E. you have to treat them all the same, or some are going to act differently than others just because of you. They are surprisingly delicate story 22. Humans have an involuntary self-defense mechanism wherein, if the human in question is nervous, it will secrete a foul-smelling odor via its sweat. On the topic of primatology, chimpanzees have a vastly superior short-term memory than humans. After looking at a screen full of numbers for a fraction of a second, they can perfectly tap where the numbers were in the correct counting order, even with other numbers missing. It would take a human well over 30 seconds to memorize a screen in the same way. Oh, and also, each one of an octopus's suckers can lift 10 pounds per 1 inch of diameter. A female giant Pacific octopus has about 280 suckers per arm, the largest being 3 inches in diameter, and the smallest being less than a single centimeter. If we assume the mean diameter of the octopus's suckers is 1 inch, a single female O, oh, vulgaris can move about 22,400 pounds. Assuming it can move all of its suction cups in a single direction in unison, more impressive is how much an average human male could potentially move, that being 30,000, assuming all muscles are working in one direction in unison. I know these are technically four facts, but I find each of them fascinating. Story 23. Your eyes constantly turn themselves off whenever you move them, and when they turn themselves back on, they kind of freeze frame so that your brain can catch up with what you're seeing, which is why when you look at a clock or a timer, look away, and then look back again quickly, sometimes it'll seem to take longer than a second on the clock for a second to pass. Little me was devastated that I didn't have momentary time-stopping powers. Story 24. The human brain can rewire itself to function as best it can if something isn't right. So a blind man can learn to see using his other senses. Daniel Kish actually taught himself echolocation when he went blind as a baby and has been using it to navigate ever since. He also teaches other blind people this same skill, and CAT scans show that his visual cortex is actually processing the sounds as images, so he's seeing like a bat or dolphin would. Story 25. Science has only roughly described about 10% of all species on Earth. Of the estimated 8.7 million species, there are only about 5,500 species of mammal, and disturbingly enough, the rate of extinction is about 101,000 times higher than in other geological periods. If we keep the pace of extinction going for another 200-500 years, we can count this period as the sixth mass extinction event, meaning the sixth time in the last 500 million years that more than 75% of species have gone extinct. The last one was with the dinosaurs and a comet. Story 26 one man did more to destroy the world's environment than any other. Thomas Migley Jr. was responsible for inventing tetraethylide, a.k.a. leaded gasoline, and the first CFC, Freon. Both would be banned and phased out in the 1970s and 80s due to their effects on human life. Lead poisoning was causing huge health problems in America, while Freon was especially responsible for the depletion of the ozone layer. One researcher said that no other organism on Earth was responsible for as much environmental destruction as Midgley. But at the same time, in 1940, at the age of 51, 
Midgley contracted poliomyelitis, which left him severely disabled. He devised an elaborate system of ropes and pulleys to lift himself out of bed. In 1944, he became entangled in the device and died of strangulation. Story 27. This might be confusing, but bear with me. You have three doors in front of you. Behind two of them is nothing, and behind one is one million dollars. When you choose one door, one of the doors with nothing behind it is revealed, so only two remain. You now get the chance to either change your answer to the other door, or stick with the one you've chosen. That all being said, if you switch your answer, you have a higher probability of winning the money than losing. This scenario has boggled mathematicians, and some have even done the experiment in real life, only to find out it's still true. Story 28. FEMA uses an unofficial measurement of how bad a natural disaster is. They base it off the Waffle House. Waffle House brags that no matter what, they're always open and have support in place to continue restaurant operations. FEMA uses this to determine how bad a storm is. If the restaurant in a particular area is leveled, they know to get the most help there ASAP. It's called the Waffle House Index. Story 29. The Cabrini Green public housing projects in the nicer-ish side of Chicago marked their housing numbers with ugly, bleak-looking black stenciled spray paint on concrete. When someone pointed out that they should use metal numbers instead of spray paint, since not only would they look much nicer, but they would actually be cheaper to maintain, the city replied that housing projects were supposed to look somewhat utilitarian, and if they looked too good, the richer and whiter residents of Chicago would complain. The city was spending extra money on an uglier option just so it wouldn't look too nice and upset rich white people. Story 30. In 897, Pope Boniface VI tried the former head of the Catholic Church, Pope Formosus. A pope trying another pope would be bizarre enough on its own, so it's especially weird considering that Pope Formosus was dead. Probably around January 897, Stephen VI ordered that the corpse of his predecessor Formosus be removed from its tomb and brought to the papal court for judgment. With the corpse propped up on a throne, a deacon was appointed to answer for the deceased pontiff. Formosus was accused of transmigrating seas in violation of canon law, of perjury, and of serving as a bishop while actually a layman. Eventually the corpse was found guilty. Liutprand and other sources say that, after having the corpse stripped of its papal vestments, Stephen then cut off the three fingers of the right hand that it had used in life for blessings, next formally invalidating all of Formosus' acts and ordinations, including his ordination of Stephen VI as Bishop of Anagni. The body was finally interred in a graveyard for foreigners, only to be dug up once again, tied to weights, and cast into the Tiber River. Story 31. Haven't seen any of these yet. The slow loris, a nocturnal primate, is both poisonous and venomous. Glands on its elbows secrete a toxin that, if eaten, poisons its killer. The loris licks its elbows, populating its mouth with this toxin, making it venomous as well, mimicking the toxicity of a viper. Monkey sounds used as sound effects in movies are usually recorded from the rock hyrax, a rodent-looking animal related to the elephant. Many reptiles and amphibians can go through parthenogenesis. That is, when environmental conditions are ideal, females can naturally clone themselves, impregnating themselves without need to mate with a male. The genes often exhibit mutations and are not exact replicas, keeping the gene pool variable and allowing for these clones to produce offspring as well. The mitochondria of the cell contain a double membrane and can multiply on their own. Why muscle cells have higher numbers of mitochondria than, say, skin cells? It also has different DNA than the nucleus, most of which is inherited directly from the maternal line and thus used heavily in genetic research. It is believed that the mitochondria was actually its own organism that was engulfed by a single cell organism, explaining the double membrane and varying genetic material. Over time, it created a symbiotic relationship with single cell organisms, eventually just becoming part of the cell.